Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Arrows Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist with a doctorate in human sexuality. I'm also a relationship coach, and you can find me at eroscoaching.com. So I just want to do a quick shout out. Um, earlier this week, I actually uh, was on uh, two different uh, podcasts, and I just released them on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel. So go to arrowscoaching.com, click on YouTube, and you'll be able to get to my channel where you'll be able to listen to the different interviews that I did um, this week. Uh, One of which is about sexual trauma. Um, I was uh, sharing in the episode how I was raped uh, and how it was like for me and the sexual uh, healing process that I recommend for people. And in another episode, I was uh, basically uh, live and uh, talking about uh, sex in Singapore, being a sexologist in Singapore. Okay, so now on to today's show, we're talking about Warrior Woman Today, a path away from shame toward power. So we are living in extraordinary times on both the material and spiritual level. There's a sense of things in flux and our world seems overpowering, overwhelming right now, isn't it? (laughs) So what are we to do in this climate where it's sometimes aggressive, often separated from Spirit with very real risk in play. So that's a time for transformation and it's calling out to us. We have tremendous amount of power and there's much that you can do to be physically and spiritually strong and ready for resilience. So sometimes it can feel like something's blocking your power though, uh, doesn't it? So what blocks us is shame and uh, the value of holding on to shame is to try to assert control over our ability to belong. So today we're going to be talking about the path of the warrior woman and the fight that has to be in us and for us first before it can be for the world. So a warrior woman uh, belongs to herself first and so releases shame and reclaims her power. So we're going to talk more about Warrior Woman today with Sarah Martin, and she's Warrior Woman, she's a certified sex coach, and she's a badass. Today she calls uh, Warsaw, uh, Poland home. She's traveled to over 35 countries as a woman alone and has studied 10 languages so far. Uh, Rentless travel has become a defining feature of her life. Besides operating her private clinical practice, she works at the Sex Positive Institute at Warsaw, Poland, presenting workshops and trainings. And her favorite things relate to erotic fitness, including play fighting, orgasmic running, which I interviewed her uh, about last year, uh, April, and uh, pole dance. So she's utterly fascinated by the connection between fitness, nutrition, and vibrant sexual energy. So her first book, uh, Orgasmic Yoga, A Feminine Practice for Pleasurable Well-Being, is available on Amazon. Uh, Sarah Martin is also the Executive Director of the World Association of Sex Coaches, the Certifying Body and Professional Association for Sex Coaches Worldwide. So at the association, sex coaches and sexologists unite and support each other, creating a significant cumulative impact on the world. Her vision is that the world be free of sexual shame so that uh, we will be more peaceful, loving, and more connected. And you can find her at sexcoachsarah.com. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Hi, Martha. Wow, that is uh, an extraordinary intro, and thank you very much for that. (laughs) Yeah, that was uh, very long, uh, so I I shortened it a little bit, and uh, I'll continue with the (laughs) intro that you gave me uh, later on. Okay, so... um, this conversation of uh, interviewing you for Warrior Woman really first came about because on your profile you talk about yourself being a warrior woman and then you mentioned in your profile play fighting. So I did a play fighting workshop um, in Sydney, January 
and it was at the Really Good Sex Festival in January. So um, you happen to have the same teacher for play fighting that I had at the workshop, so the world is a small place. So tell us more about play fighting first before we go into Warrior Woman. Absolutely. So um, I learned about play fighting only for the first time in April last year. Uh, I just moved to Poland. Uh, before that, I'd lived in London, uh, UK. And just after getting here, my uh, my friend, my dear friend, Dr. Agata Leva, who started the Sex Positive Institute, she called me up and said, Sarah, there's a play fighting workshop. And I was thinking to myself, what is this, right? I was incredibly skeptical before I went. Um, but then I went along and I joined and I met um, Frank and Sheila, these amazing play fighting teachers yeah. from Germany. Yeah, yeah exactly. And... Um, was just totally surprised by how much I enjoyed myself in this workshop. Um, it was it was beautiful. It was physical. It was powerful. And and what's more, I discovered you know by the end of the second day when I was quite sore from all of the activity, um, you know, a lot of things about myself and about strength and my relationship to it. So I mean, play fighting. If you're wanting to imagine what it is, uh, play fighting has uh, all of the energy and dynamism of fighting with none of the destructive elements. Uh, it's a really powerful way to feel your strength, to feel your partner's strength, um, and also to to play, which I think is really mm. important because as adults, we don't often give ourselves the opportunity to just play. And a lot of us did this as kids, right? You might have done a bit of rough and tumble yeah. with a, a cousin or a sibling. Did you do that? Yeah. 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 And and rediscovering that as an adult, there was quite a lot of spiritual joy in the experience, if that makes sense. Yes. That's beautiful. And uh, so that basically progressed to where, um, you know, I, I went to a few more workshops with Frank and Sheila and worked with them and uh, Agata to, to see about how we could bring play fighting to Poland. And so now, uh, a bit over a year later, I'm teaching this together with Agata here in Warsaw, Poland. Um, so you're more than welcome if you're ever in Warsaw to drop by one of our workshops. Um, but yes, so play fighting is one of my absolute passions. Oh, that's so great. You know, I'm so envious of you being able to attend these workshops and now be able to teach it. It, it was a really fun attending uh, Frank and Sheila's workshop. Uh, they're a very um, beautiful couple. And, um, yeah, a lot of people really enjoyed their workshops. There were people who attended every single one of their workshops for the festival, um, myself included. And, uh, yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the link with play fighting and uh, warrior woman, because um, you know one of the things about play fighting is, uh, as a woman, is being afraid of getting hurt, being disfigured, or like you know like losing limbs and stuff. And uh, when we think of warrior woman, we think of uh, this woman who's really masculine. And as a woman who identifies as masculine, me, uh, a.k.a. me, um, I have at, had to uh, work on my femininity actively for the last few years. So, uh, you know, where does that um, tie in with our sexuality, uh, in your opinion, um, being warrior woman? Wow, there's a, a lot of different elements to that question. And yeah, I think maybe sorry. I'll... <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, I'll start with the beginning. So going as a woman to a play fighting workshop, and and anything with fighting in the title. I mean, sometimes it really does have this um, masculine quality, and it can be intimidating. And one thing that's great at play fighting workshops, though initially a little bit worrisome uh, ahead of time, is that um, you know it's it's mixed gender, and so you may wind up sparring with uh, with men or with other women. And you know there, there is a strength differential typically between men and women, um, yes. but a really powerful part of that experience is coming to realize just how strong 
you are physically as a woman because when you're socialized female, and I don't know if it's the same in Singapore, but it seems to be pretty consistent around the world, you know, one part of this um, concept of femininity is weakness. Is it the same there? Yeah. 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 And just after... Pretty, pretty. Mm, so weak, pretty, quiet, um, some of these words that are typically associated with femininity. And what came through this experience was both getting a chance to feel how strong I actually was, um, but not only that, but getting to feel the strength of other women was really interesting because it, it directly challenged this thing that I'd been taught my whole life, right? That to be a woman means to be weak. Um, and yet seeing the evidence all around me that that's not the case was kind of the inspiration here. Because I started thinking, well, you know, why is strength not feminine? Because if we think of some of the other things associated with, you know, uh, biological femaleness, you know, the ability to bear children, that requires an awful lot of strength, both physical and spiritual, right? Um, and that kind of started me on this path of exploring, you know, well, what does, what does strength and femininity mean? And how could this benefit women both uh, spiritually and in their sexual relationships with, with others? Um, which I think is kind of the second part of your question, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the and link between the two. Yeah. The link between the two, absolutely. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about it now. I know we've got a break coming up, and I think we can dive into this a bit more afterwards. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, more soon, I guess. Yes. So, more with Sarah after. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. You're listening to the show on the Om Times Radio Network, and you can share the show with your friends by going to the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you can listen to the show without needing to download any app. That's really cool. So today we're talking mm -hmm. about warrior woman, and according to Sarah Martin, a warrior is strong, brave, courageous, and powerful. She risks losing things, burning bridges, warrior risk getting hurt. And she takes these risks because what she's fighting against pre precludes the healthy existence of what she's fighting for. So do you value yourself enough to take those risks on your own behalf? The fight is for you, for yourself, for your right to the best life for you, for space to flourish, and for the pleasure and peace that you deserve. So we're with Sarah, Sarah Martin, and you can find her at sexcoachsarah.com. 
Facebook, Sex Coach, Sex Coach Sarah, and Twitter, Sex Coach Sarah, and her email is sarah at goodsexlifestyle.com. Okay, just before break, we were talking about how we first thought of doing Warrior Woman for the show. She's um, talked about how she does play fighting, and um, I talked about how, as a woman, I'm scared of getting hurt. And so, Sarah, is being a warrior just about physical strength? You were going into it just before the break. Yes, so thank you for that. Um, So is being a warrior woman just about physical strength? No, it's not. Um, Though the reason why I think this exploration of physical strength is so valuable for women is because it's an embodied way. It's an embodied knowing. It's a route into working on this idea that actually I'm strong. Because what do we think of when we think of strength? Sure, we can take a very masculine look at it and think about you know, muscles and the development of the physical body. And I think there is certainly something to um, developing your physical body so that you can feel more strength. Um, But it goes so much further beyond that because the the adjectives you listed there that I use to describe a warrior, brave, courageous, strong, and powerful. I mean, again, it's interesting. We often associate these words with masculinity, but I think there's very much a feminine angle Mm. on it. Um, Because what is courage most of the time, right? Courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And, you know, if you think about that, like a warrior, you know, there's certainly fear there, right? There's taking a risk of, of yourself to go and fight for something. So if we bring that into the view of our lives as women, um, you know, often it takes a lot of courage to speak up for ourselves, right? Uh, in yes. relationships, either romantic or work or, or with other people generally, um, because sometimes that having a voice, you know, that means you're risking rocking the boat, right? That means you're risking, you know, someone maybe not liking you. Um, and in doing so, it can be absolutely terrifying. But part of the warrior spirit as well is having the courage to have a voice for yourself, to stand up and advocate for your needs. And I think this is part of the the real key here, because when we are talking about um, sex and relationships, you know, in my clinical practice with my clients, often what comes up, and in particular for my female clients, is they might not be experiencing very much pleasure with their partner. But the idea of talking to them about that is absolutely terrifying to, to stand up and say, you know, the way that you're touching me doesn't feel good. Right? Have you seen that in your practice as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is another extension of the warrior woman. So it's definitely not just about physical strength. It's also about this um, this sense of self worth that carries over into your conversations. And you mentioned in one of the intros this concept about releasing shame, because I see this path as a really powerful way to release shame. And is it all right if I talk a little bit about shame and and why that matters? Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. So with shame, shame, right, is a a social emotion. It's that feeling that you get that, oh, I'm bad, I'm wrong. And sometimes in this context that we're talking about, you know, I'm weak, you know, I'm not worthy, you know, I'm... Uh, any number of things where instead of ascribing the sensation to an action, right, you're describing your sense of self in those moments. And shame is an incredible block and something that we as sexologists see come up for our clients all of the time. And in terms of how that, that sticks around, you know, I'm a coach, right? So often when people are in habits or cycles where they're repeating something where they don't really like it, but at the same time, they're still repeating it, right? So the question is often, you know, what do you get out of this? What do you get out of this racket? What do you get out of this habit? And in general, the reason we hang on to shame, as far as I see it, is that it's our way of trying to assert control over belonging, over remaining part of a group. And so in terms of the warrior woman path, a key element of it is that 
you create your own sense of belonging with yourself and with yourself first. Because once you do that, you can bring your sense of self-worth out into the world. You can bring it into conversations. It enables courage. Um, is this making sense? Yeah, making sense. Beautiful. Um, so, I mean, I think that's uh, all I wanted to say about shame more or less in brief. I'm wondering where is going to be juicy to go next with, uh, with the warrior woman concept. Uh, I'm curious what questions you have for me, actually. Yeah. Okay. So one of the big things about being warrior woman in the intro and letting go of shame is um, I feel uh, this thing you mentioned about burning bridges. And that's one of the things that I do. I, I have a habit of burning bridges. Like people piss me off and then I'm like, get out of my face, you know. And um, this burning bridge um, thing, I think, um, you know, uh, has to do with our desire to be pleased. Because obviously I would be letting go of relationships that were not uh, serving me. In fact, I have been in quite a number of friendships where I was just being used. And so in, in realizing that there was no love lost and burning that bridge, I feel sad about it, but actually it's healthy for me. So how do we, uh, you know, there's this shame that comes upon us, but there's also a grief like, um, you know, I stood up for myself and that's great, but then there's that doubt, you know, of, oh, I stood up for myself, but, you know, could I have done it better? So there was that warrior coming forward, like, to protect me. But then afterwards, it's like, oh, um, yeah, so I burned that bridge. So what do I do now? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I feel you on this one. because um, and, and I use that metaphor deliberately because it's a powerful one. You know, if you actually mm. imagine burning a bridge between two sides of a river, what that's kind of saying is that there's no way back. And what it also means, though, is that there's no way for whatever um, is on that other side to come to you again. And I think what you said is actually important to acknowledge that there is often very real loss. There is often very real grief, even if you realize that a relationship or a job or uh, a friendship is no longer serving you and is, in fact, actually taking away from you, diminishing you. Um, even with that in mind, you know, we are social creatures, we human beings, and the connections that we form between each other are some of the most um, important and powerful things in our lives. So letting go of a connection, that's hard. And, and that's the bravery element of being a warrior woman. Because I see it so often, I, you know, in particular in my own past, I saw it a lot in myself, this idea of, you know, feeling like, oh, but that I should, or, you know, I, I, you know, isn't it what I'm supposed to do to hang on to relationships or make them work? I think that's something that might resonate with a lot of women, this idea that, oh, I feel some responsibility towards making something work. And the, the idea here is not necessarily to just burn bridges left, right and center, right? Because that's more mm -hmm. destructive and a warrior isn't out for destruction. Most of the time, a warrior is a defender if you actually think about it. I mean, I keep using this word warrior and I'm using it not so much in a, a literal sense. I'm not saying like, you know, let's all go and make a, an army. What I'm saying is it's an archetype. It's, it's something in our collective consciousness that we can associate with a number of different traits. Um, and this exploration of archetypes, I think is a really interesting area of spirituality that applies a lot in um, sexuality and uh, sexual expression, sexually related contexts. Um, but so, in any case, to wrap it back around, generally warriors defend and they sometimes attack, but again, it's often in this point of view of defense. And what are they defending? They're defending their right to, to peace, to pleasure, to happiness, to harmony um, from those things that might um, upset it. So, but I, I think it's really important to say that, you know, this doesn't mean becoming some sort of automaton, you know, we are still mm -hmm. human. So it's very normal to experience those emotions, to experience grief and loss, even if what you're letting go of is something that was no longer serving you. Does that answer your mm -hmm. question? Yes, very much so. I really love what you're saying. I think we take 
warrior woman, so literally like warrior, like fight, that is important for you to say what you just did, which is it's not about just going around dis destructing things, but also the other side of defending. So when, when you said that, I thought of people who are aggressive versus people who are assertive. Like you can stand up for yourself and you can say it in a quiet way, but actually you are being a warrior woman because you're standing up for your peace, pleasure, harmony, and um, there's no need to say sorry for standing up for yourself. And so I like um, what you are bringing forth because I think this uh, finding of our own voice has to come from what you said earlier, which is belonging to ourselves, and then being able to be then out to the world in a strong way. I think we forget as women uh, a lot of times that it's really important to not just be feminine and pretty, but also be strong and steady within ourselves. So I love what you're sharing. Thank you. And, you know, I think it's also important to point out, just as we're coming up to the break, that being a warrior woman doesn't mean that you, you know, that you are putting on war paint all the time, right? You can you can very much still explore, you know, uh, feminine fashion and and all of the the associated items if that's what you love and what you want to do in your life. You know, this source of inner strength. I think my key message is that it's not at odds with being feminine, whatever that means to you. And it certainly doesn't have to be. And we can have more after the break. Yeah. So Mo is Sarah after the break. Uh, check out her website, sexcoachsarah.com. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. This is where we talk about the link between sex and spirit. And today we're talking about something really spiritual, whether you know it or not. And it's about warrior woman. And uh, Sarah was just explaining just before break, it's not literally putting on war paint, even though her profile photo shows her doing that. We don't do that. We don't put on war paint and run around naked, you know. It's just an archetype, okay? It's an archetype for us to channel. And even warrior woman doesn't have to do with um, holding X and destroying things. No. It's about being strong within yourself, being a defender of your right to pleasure, peace, harmony. And it's not at all at odds with your femininity. So we need to make that clear. And uh, it's really powerful to actually be able to talk about this today because I think there are parts of us that we are afraid to reclaim. 
And, um, you know, uh, I remember when I was uh, working on my femininity for two years actively, um, I felt weak and I, I, I couldn't get things done. And sometimes you swing the other way and it's important to find a balance within yourself. So it's important to talk about warrior woman. And I'm wondering whether listeners uh, are comfortable with the warrior woman within yourself. And uh, we're talking about having a path away from shame toward power. So tell us more, uh, Sarah. Uh, make a case for us, okay? The importance of warrior women for the world. Why does the world need warrior women? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love your enthusiasm. It's awesome. And I think something uh, you you were touching on there in uh, in the intro, uh, though I got a little bit distracted by the, the power that's coming from you, yes, um, it points to um, <laughs> this idea, right, um, that sometimes we do feel weak inside of ourselves. And sometimes there is this big challenge in terms of standing up for ourselves. And what we talked about right at the top of the show was, you know, we're living in fairly extraordinary times, right? Um, and part of, I think, where that weakness comes from or that sense of weakness um, it, and you'd mentioned as well, sometimes struggling to get things done, um, at least in my experience, and I don't know if it's the same as yours, some of that can come from this being socialized as a people pleaser, right? That I must say yes to everything and I must put the feelings of others before my own feelings. And how is that connected to the extraordinary times in which we are living? If we look around ourselves, there's probably quite a lot that doesn't please us. There's probably quite a lot where we look and go, something is wrong here. Um, and, and I'm talking about both the material and um, sort of political landscapes we're seeing arise, but I'm also talking about some sort of spiritual shift. It feels like we're at a time where there are big questions about how do we move forward? Um, how do we move forward with the planet, right? Uh, how do we move forward with making sure that, you know, our children um, have have a future that is worthy of them? And, you know, I, I, it comes down to starting with having a voice and having that strength of inner conviction to be able to speak up and say something is not right. Um, and what I notice is that, you know, yes, more and more women around the world are starting to find their voice. I mean, we saw this with the uh, the Women's March in Washington, D.C. this year uh, and the uh, associated marches that took place all over the world, that there is some sort of awakening awareness going on. Um, but why does the world need warrior women in particular? Um, I would say one of the biggest arguments for that is that, you know, what goes on in our personal lives and the microcosm of our day to day and in our relationships with others. I mean, that's how we build up societies. That's how we build up the world that we see all around us. And if women are struggling to have a voice in their relationship with their partners or their children or their friends, it becomes very hard to have a wider voice for the world, right? And really it starts with us, with our ability to advocate for ourselves, with our ability to speak up for ourselves. Um, it's a great, training ground for then perhaps advocating at a PDA meeting or advocating in the office, advocating uh, for, for change or creations or projects or ideas, um, because we need to be bringing those into the world. We've got a lot of problems that need solving. Is this resonating? Yes. Yes. And and so if we think about, you know, the, the microcosm of, uh, of a relationship, and let's talk about a sexual relationship because we are on uh, Eros evolution and we're looking at that link between sex and spirit. Um, if you imagine a relationship where, you know, and again, I'll use a, a heterosexual couple as an example here, um, but where, you know, perhaps a, a woman has gotten into a habit of faking orgasm and uh, doing so because, you know, she's not enjoying uh, sex with her partner and kind of just wants to hurry it up, get it done. Um, and if you look at that, not just in a one-off example, but in a long string of, of examples, a pattern of behavior, what is that doing? I mean, number one, it's giving her partner incorrect information about what she enjoys, which makes it really difficult for anything to change um, in, in terms of what they think 
uh, is enjoyable for their partner. And on her side, it's, it's kind of sending a subtle message that uh, my pleasure is less important than my partner's feelings, or my pleasure is less important than um, my partner's ego, perhaps, um, if they place a lot of importance on uh, orgasm as a goal rather than an experience. And, you know, in that way, it's sending a small and powerful message to yourself over and over of them above me. And so long as that's happening, how can someone feel like an equal and able to share their voice. I mean, do you see this ever in your practice? Yeah. They don't feel like an equal. And, you know, it's it's not saying that, you know, equality, I think, of a problem with it when we talk about it at a societal level is that sometimes people um, equate equality with sameness or, you know, as if we are saying we are clones of each other, which is clearly not true. We are not. But here, what I'm saying is, you know, you should be able to be an equal advocate for yourself in your relationships. And I think it's a great place to start, in all honesty, on the warrior woman path, both with yourself and in your interaction with your intimate partner, because it's, it's number one, an area where you can see really quickly the results of having a voice. And even though it can be you know, that uh, scary sometimes to speak up and say what you like or what you want. If you're with a partner who is listening and kind and loving and then acts on what you tell them, my word, that sends you such a powerful message that, wow, look what happens if I have the courage to talk about what I want. Look what happens when I have the courage to say what I don't want. And look at how that starts to change everything. And for me, sexuality is such a deeply personal and powerful experience that sometimes by starting there, it can be a shortcut to personal development generally. What do you think? Yes, I agree with you. Mm. So from here, um, I'm trying to think what would be most interesting to speak about next. Um, because I think this is sort of a, a foundational point. And until yeah. we can do it for ourselves, it's very hard to do it for the world. Uh, what would you like me to explore next? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really important what you're saying because you made a, a case why we need to be able to uh, assert ourselves. And um, you talked about the, the, the desire. I think uh, most people will not uh, disagree with what you're saying. Most people will be struggling with the how, the execution of it. So could you uh, maybe share with us some of your personal examples of how you uh, started to claim your, your inner warrior woman? Yes, and that's, uh, that's a big topic. Um, and I think the first thing I will give to anybody starting down the warrior path is a bit of a disclaimer that as we start this crucial work of reclaiming ourselves, and I think you may, um, you know, resonate with some of this because I know about the work that you do about trauma release, that, you know, sometimes it's a painful process. And especially when you start looking at yourself and your way of being in the world with eyes wide open and asking some of these fundamental questions of why. You know, why do I tolerate the things I tolerate? We talk about tolerations in coaching um, as, as something to focus on, to move them out of the way, to free up more energy for yourself and the gifts that you're bringing to the world, right? But as you go into this process, it can be really hard, right? It can be really painful. It can be truths that you've spent a lot of time and energy developing habits to avoid ever looking at, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, part of my pathway in, um, for me, it started with the body. For me, it started in this play fighting workshop in April that got me asking these first questions. But while not everybody has access to play fighting workshops, you do have access to your own body. And so I think there are some really great exercises that we as women can do to get in touch, because I think a lot of us live our lives pretty disembodied. I see this a lot. You know, we're often on phones or in front of screens, and we're not really paying attention or very aware of the sensations going on in our own body. 
And the body can be a source of a lot of really great information that sometimes eludes us when uh, we're just being verbal or maybe just reading a book or a blog post or listening to a podcast because those are things outside of ourselves and they can be incredibly useful guides. I hope this radio program is a useful guide for anyone listening who's curious. Um, mm -hmm. But going into the body as a source of information can be incredibly powerful. Um, I would also say from there, because I'm aware we're gonna be coming up to a break pretty soon, um, but that the next step after getting in touch with your body through some sort of physical activity and, you know, Pick a sport that you enjoy and maybe shift your mind from worrying about the technicalities to focusing more on how does it feel in this moment to be in this body? You know, what are the sensations I have in my arms and my legs? What does my scalp feel like when I'm running, for example? And just see what shifts because the first thing you're going to need on this journey um, on the warrior woman path, on your path to releasing shame is getting in touch with, with you and with you without all of these external factors. Because oftentimes, right, shame is an external voice that we heard before that isn't actually in line with our own values, attitudes, and beliefs. Um, and I think after the break, I would love to talk a little bit more about what comes next and also how you can get support on this journey. Because uh, it's also really hard to do it alone, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. So um, some, sometimes you cut out. So what you're saying is after break, you're going to share with us more about the process and the work that you do. So check out Sarah work at techcoachsarah.com. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Home Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And welcome back to the last 15 minutes of today's show. We are talking about Warrior Woman with Sarah Martin. And just before break, we were talking about. Um, many things on today's show. We talked about what is Warrior Woman, the link with strength and with our femininity, with being assertive without losing ourselves, with being able to find belonging with ourselves so that we can be out to the world. And she made a big case uh, just now of being able to uh, understand the importance of activating this warrior woman within us and um, the people pleaser as opposed to the people pleaser that is in us. And um, so she started talking about uh, some of the examples of how we can uh, activate this warrior woman. So uh, she, she also said just before break that um, it's hard when we do this by ourselves. 
So I'm very interested in um, the process that uh, you take your clients through, uh, Sarah. Yes, thank you, and uh, great to be back. Where I was going to go next, um, in terms of practical tips for listeners who are wanting to explore the warrior path, yeah. is um, you know one thing that can really help is getting in touch with and aware of our tolerations. And sometimes the easiest way to find those are getting in touch with our anger, which in particular as women, we are socialized to not look at at all. You know, uh, we're often presented a vision of femininity where anger is very taboo. And I think it's important to recognize that because realizing that I was angry uh, was actually quite a painful process in itself. Um, and for me, anger often shows up as, uh, as sadness. So I started taking a look at these emotions and trying to tap into what am I actually sad about? And is it sadness? Is it a, a loss or a bit of grief? Or is it actually anger? Because anger is often, uh, it often comes up when we feel powerless around something. And it's an active emotion that moves us towards change. So by looking at what it's telling you and holding a space without judgment, and I recommend journaling it, writing it down without self-censorship, that you can always go back to it later and start to think, okay, well, what are the practical steps? Um, and if you have access in your area to um, an anger release workshop, that can actually be a really powerful way to, to tap in without doing it alone. Um, in terms of with my clients and in my practice and in my work, um, I think one thing that's extraordinarily powerful are um, group settings, so workshop settings, where there's an opportunity both to have a facilitator there who's experienced in working with groups, but then also to have the experience of sharing, because as soon as I started to realize in my own personal development that, oh my God, I'm not the only woman who feels this way, and that my experience is actually, you know, a normal experience and an experience others have, and the shame I have is shame that other people feel sometimes as well, that was extraordinarily healing. And that opened up a big space in order to step forward and start thinking, okay, well, where do I need to be courageous? What do I need to speak up about? And to actually practice that in a supportive group setting first, wow, that is that is powerful. And so looking for women's circles or men's circles or otherwise um, groups like this, which you know I run here in Warsaw and are run all over the world, um, is also another really great way. Um, and I would also recommend to listeners of this program, you know, having a personal coach or a personal um, guide is also a big enabler. So I do have a special offer for listeners today. Shall I share that now? Yes, please. Great. So um, if, if you've listened today and this has resonated with you, I'd like to invite you to book a special 90-minute session with me. And I typically call them warrior woman sessions, but I do run them with men as well. Um, and, and so, you know, warrior sessions generally. Uh, it's 90 minutes. It's uh, targeted and individualized. And normally uh, for this, I ask for th or 400 Polish złoty. So that works out to about 80 British pounds or 90 US dollars. And I'm very happy to offer that to OM Times listeners um, at 50% off. So only for listeners of this program, you can have access to that for 200 złoty, which is about 40 British pounds or 50 US dollars. Um, and to take advantage of that, just drop me an email. Um, you can reach me at Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at Good Sex Lifestyle. That's all one word, goodsexlifestyle.com. And if you just put um, Eros Evolution Warrior Woman in the subject line, um, I'm more than happy to get you booked in. I work by Skype and in person for any listeners in Poland. And I think there are a few today. Um, but in any case, um, just to summarize, so if you're wanting to get started on this path, if you're wanting to release shame and start uh, claiming your power, um, I think it begins with the body and really getting in touch with yourself, with your knowing, and having some touch with the physical strength that you do have is an incredibly powerful springboard towards realizing 
all of the other strengths that you have, the strength that you have spiritually, the strength that you have intellectually, uh, the strength that you have within your character and within your soul. Um, from there, um, being able to get in touch with what are you tolerating as a starting point? What are the things in your life that you're simply tolerating that aren't bringing you joy, that when you think about them, it feels like a heavy weight, like, oh, I have to do this again? Those things, um, and also sometimes the things that come to you wrapped up in sadness or anger, start writing them down and don't censor yourself when you write them down. It can be scribbled. It can be um, all, all sorts of explosive language if that's what you're feeling because you won't act on it in the moment. You're simply trying to capture it because those are your clues about where to maybe go to start practicing courage, to practicing confronting the things that we're tolerating that are not serving us in our lives. When we talked about burning bridges earlier and the power and strength of that metaphor. Um, from there, finding a supportive group is a brilliant idea, and that can be anger release workshops or things like women's circles or men's circles or otherwise a group setting where you have a chance to see that the things that are perhaps causing you shame on the inside, you're not the only one because the antidote to shame is empathy. When you hear someone say, me too, wow, that's powerful, right? in addition to choosing to belong to yourself first. But I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's incredibly curative to be in a group setting and, and hear this, and it adds to your strength, it adds to your power. And then my, my fourth top tip, as it were, is um, find someone to work with one-on-one, -on -one, someone to help guide you through your process. It's incredibly valuable. Um, and, and so that's you know, how I would recommend listeners start down this path and it's you know small steps at a time and it's it's challenging but it's some of the most valuable work that you can do for you um does that make sense yes so i i want to just check in on your tips so the first one is to be aware of tolerances the things that don't give you any joy the second one is true journaling the third one is to find a community the fourth is to find somebody to work with one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, did I miss any of your practical tips? You did. The very first one, which is getting in touch with your body, getting in touch with your own physical strengths, sensations, and the messages that your body sends you. Um, because, you know, fundamentally, I think the body is incredibly knowledgeable. Um, it has been evolving over hundreds of thousands of years and is perfectly designed to be your carriage through this life. So the more you can listen to it, and the more you can discover the strength that is in your physical form, the more that I believe that can translate to spiritual strength, to strength of character, to self-confidence, to self-worth. Um, and, and I think actually to an extent, you know, I think it's a big part of belonging to yourself, is claiming that this vehicle that you're in is yours. and. Um, it doesn't have to be for anybody else but you, but you can choose to share it, right? Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much for everything that you shared. So I just want to do a shout out for uh, Sarah. So previously she was on uh, Arrows Evolution talking about orgasmic running. And uh, this relates to what she's talking about, which is body sensations. And uh, in another episode, uh, she talked about the sex coach industry. And so for those of you who are interested to find out what is sex coaching, you can actually go and check out that episode in February as well. And you can find it by going to Google and you key in Eros Evolution, that's E-R-O-S Evolution at a glance, and you'll come to my page where you will see every single episode that is being listed on just one page. So I know on the On Times Radio Network, you can have access to uh, all the different episodes, but generally it's like, you know, kind of like, I don't know, like different pages. So this one is just like a scroll up and down and you'll be able to find every single show that I've done. So definitely want to check out uh, Sarah's uh, show on orgasmic running because I was very fascinated uh, by it, and she has a book on Amazon about it. Um, is, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Sarah? 
Um, just I would love to invite everybody, if you want to learn more about me, um, please feel free to visit my website. That is www.sexcoachsarah.com, and Sarah is spelled S-A-R-A-H. Yeah, and also she's on Facebook. That's Sex Coach Sarah on Twitter, Sex Coach Sarah. So remember, she has this uh, offer, and uh, if you didn't catch the details about the offer, it's basically half price of a 90-minute session to explore your warrior woman, and you can email her at sarah at goodsexlifestyle.com. So what about the men, Sarah? So about the men, I invite you, if you've listened to this, um, to feel free to still get in touch and take me up on that offer. Um, because the world needs warriors too. I think I speak a lot to warrior women uh, because it's my own lived experience and the journey I've been on. Um, but I'd like to invite warrior men to get in touch too because uh, a lot of the very same principles apply. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sarah, for making the time and being here with us. And she's calling in from Warsaw, uh, Poland. And she's originally from UK. And thank you very much, Martha, for having me again. I so enjoy uh, being on this program with you and talking about the connection between sex and spirit. Yeah, I'm so glad you came. So it's such a pleasure. So Sarah's vision is for a world free of sexual shame that will be more peaceful, more loving, and more connected. And you can certainly hear the passion of her vision uh, through uh, 